As we approach Christmas Day, many people anticipate the excitement of family gatherings, parties, and holiday programs. But as believers, our deepest joy is in the fact that the long-awaited Messiah, the Lord of glory, has arrived on earth in human flesh to redeem us. In this final series of the semester, Micah Herbster examines four aspects of Christ's character on earth, encouraging every believer during this Christmas season to behold the Messiah. Hi everyone, this is Micah Herbster and I wanna welcome you to another week of podcasts on the Walk Talks podcast. This week, we're gonna be looking at and thinking about what we are celebrating during the Christmas season. Christmas is one of my favorite times of year. It's one of my favorite uh, holidays to celebrate. I love the lights and I love the food. I love the extra time with family. All of those are really wonderful things. But the main reason I love Christmas is because of what we are celebrating. We are not celebrating just good gifts and exciting times with family. Christmas is a time to stop and contemplate what took place over 2,000 years ago when God came to earth. Jesus Christ came into this world. And this week on the podcast, I wanna remind you through scripture of what it means to celebrate Christmas, what it meant for God to come to earth. And really, there are four qualities that I wanna key in on this week as we behold the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first quality that I want to remind you of as we celebrate Christmas is Christ's deity. Hebrews 1 and verse 1 says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. The writer of Hebrews gives several statement, statements about who Jesus is in these few verses. He is heir of all things in verse two. He is the creator of all things, he says in verse two. He says that he has made the world. Jesus made the world. He is creator. In verse three, then again, he says he is the brightness of God's glory. He shines forth who God is. And this is the statement I wanna reflect on today, and that is what Hebrews 1 and verse 3 says, that he is the express image of his person. Literally, that phrase could be understood as Jesus is the exact representation of all that God is. Stop for just a moment and think about this truth today. Jesus is totally, fully, and completely God. The two words that we just read a moment ago, Jesus being the express image, is actually just one word in the Greek text. It is the word character. It literally has the, an idea of an instrument that engraves and marks a stamp on something. It, it generally has been used to, to describe the act of stamping something or to make something in, in a mold, represent something. That's who Jesus is. He is the exact representation of God. Now, this is not a new theme in the New Testament. Let me take you back to John 1 and verse 1, where John says there, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, talking about Jesus, was God. Jesus said in John 10 and verse 30, I and my Father are one. There he's claiming to be one with the Father. Isaiah 9 and verse 6 Isaiah prophesies looking forward and says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, talking about Jesus. And the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor. Here it is, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus, again, talking to the Pharisees in John 8 and verse 58, says to them, truly, truly, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. 
Remember back in the Old Testament when God revealed himself to Moses and to his, his covenant people? Who did he say that he was? Moses says to God, who am I gonna tell all these Israelites has sent me? God looks at Moses at the burning bush and he says, tell them that I am has sent you. The self-existent God, Yahweh. And Jesus in John 8 claims to be Yahweh, to be the Messiah, to be equal with God. Paul affirms this in his writings as well. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, he says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, and here it is, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Again, in Colossians 1 and verse 15, Paul says, Who is the image, talking about Christ, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? One writer put it this way. He said, the son is such a revelation of the father that when we look at Jesus, we see what God's real being is. Hebrews 1.3 is very clear to you and to me. We look at this Christmas season and consider Christ's incarnation, God becoming man, Emmanuel with God with us. He is God himself. He is the exact representation, the express image of his person. I love what Martin Luther said. He says, if Christ is divested of his deity, there remains no help against God's wrath and no rescue from his judgment. You say, Micah, great. Jesus is God. But what does that really mean for us? Well, may I just remind you that it means everything. You see, if Jesus was not God and he came to earth just as a good prophet, just as some preacher, just as an ordinary human being, well then, first of all, Jesus was a liar. As we just looked at a moment ago, Jesus directly claimed to be God. I and my Father are one. So if Jesus is not God, then Jesus is a liar, and we should trust him. But if Jesus is not God, then there's a really important implication that we need to think about today, and that is that if Jesus is is not truly who he said he is, he is not God, then his sacrifice for you and for me on the cross is of no effect. The writer of Hebrews is gonna continually talk about how Jesus is better. Jesus is better. He's better than the angels. He's better than the priests. And very importantly, later on in in the book of Hebrews, Jesus is better than the Old Testament sacrifices. Think of all of the animals that were sacrificed in the Old Testament and how those Jews came year after year after year to offer up atonement for their sins, to sacrifice to the Lord. And remember, those sacrifices must be without blemish. They must be spotless. Well, in Hebrews 9, the author of Hebrews talks about how in the same way that those sacrifices must be without blemish, so the sacrifice for our atonement The last sacrifice, the Lord Jesus on the cross, he too must be without sin. He must be perfect. And who could be perfect but God himself? Listen to what Hebrews 9 verse 12 says. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into that holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. In verse 13, he goes on and he says, for if the blood of bulls and of goats And the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify us to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You and I today have redemption available to us. We have this eternal inheritance because the sacrifice that was made on our behalf was a perfect, pure, and spotless sacrifice in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just a good man, not just a good preacher, but God himself, the express image of the person of God. Would you pause today? And as you think about Christmas One week from today, think about the truth, the reality, the fact that God came into this world. He came into this world to sacrifice himself so that you and I could have eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for that 
wonderful reality today. And I hope that as you head into the Christmas season, you'll have joyful hearts, thankful hearts for all that God has done for us. Thanks for being a part of Walk Talks today by listening and subscribing to our podcast. Follow us on social media for sneak peeks at future episodes and to share your favorites with others who would benefit as well. We hope your heart has been enriched by God's word to take your next step in following Christ.